Good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody enjoyed your 4th of July more than my dog did. Okay, but uh, wonderful to uh, celebrate the independence of our country. Let's take a look at some uh, coming events and activities. Flea Market, July 13th, coming up on Saturday at 7 a.m. Next Sunday, I will be away. I'll be in Montana teaching astronomy summer camp. Uh, Consistory, Reverend Akers will be preaching. Bible study on the 21st. Community dinner on the 26th. I have 30 that will be held. 28th is Bible study. August 4th, big day, huge day. You so want to be here for this. We have Bible study, okay? And then we have communion in church as always. We have our Undercroft dedication. It looks so gorgeous down there. Look after church, see all the wonderful work that uh, Jim and Lynette have done down there. And we're going to have a dedication for the Undercroft after the service and some fellowship downstairs as well. Dorcas class, uh, still August 6th, is that 30? Yes. Good, okay. We'll get there, flea market on the 10th, and August 11th, consistory, and Reverend Anchors will be preaching again. Any other events, activities? I think it's more than sure that they're working on Christmas Bazaar stuff after church today. Yes. Well, we email out. We are, we are saying new crafts. After church today, okay. So anyone that's interested uh, over the other place, what's a bit more of all the crafty stuff there? Got it. Marcia? Um, just a two days. After church, we have our ice cream. Social. And on Sunday, so we stick with that. And August 11th is actually um, Aston Marty is going to be here. Ah, okay. Yeah. Wonderful. You don't want to miss the ice cream Sunday. We're not going to take a page off the sermon today, so we don't have a nice number. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Any other activities? Let's begin then, and uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please proceed. Billy Graham once spoke at an honor of America Day. It was a service that was held at the uh, Lincoln Memorial. And he told of a picture that once appeared on the front page of a Chicago newspaper. It's a picture of Betty Ross sitting there, and she's selling the American flag. What he thought was interesting was the caption that they had under it that said, Time to check our stitches. That's really pretty good advice. That's a good time for us to check our stitches as we talk about freedom, freedom in our lives, and freedom through our fellowship with God. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
Robert Bell's book, Habits of the Hearts, describes American culture in a similar way. Bell shows that the single most important and defining value of American society and culture is individualism. The most important things in life are those that contribute to one's individual freedom, self-expression, and success. With our culture's promotion of absolute freedom and self-expression, there are always consequences. There are always limits. There are always responsibilities. Freedom is never free. As a father explained to his son, son needs to build rights. These are your rights, but if you turn them over on the back of every bill, these are the responsibilities that go with it so that you can have those rights. We need to take care of those responsibilities. And St. Paul makes a similar point in today's reading. Paul, too, insists that there is no such thing as unfettered freedom. He says we are all enslaved to someone or something. Paul says that we all serve either sin or righteousness. Our culture assumes that sin is essentially a choice. We should not be surprised given our society's commitment to individualism and personal freedom. It assumes that humans inhabit some sort of morally neutral place, like we're sitting on a fence and we have a choice as to which side of the fence do you want to step down onto? The side of sin or the side of righteousness? Right at crossroads. The point of view assumes that sin is breaking the rules of commandments. Sin is making bad choices. Sin is doing, in Santa's terms, naughty things. But to that point of view, Paul would shout a resounding, no, 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 no. Naughty actions, breaking the rules, making bad choices are only the symptoms, are only the consequences, only the fruits of a condition that he feels is horrible. Because for Paul, sin is bondage. We are trapped. There is no mythical moral neutrality. But there is a way to discover real freedom in your life. You shall know the truth, Christ said, and the truth shall set you free. The truth is Christ himself. When we live our life in him, we discover a higher freedom than the world can know. Our true freedom lies not in continually running from responsibilities, unpleasant tasks, societal constraints, but instead running to the arms of one who loves us with an everlasting love, one who can give us an inner freedom, a freedom from guilt, a freedom from fear, a freedom from doubt, a freedom from despair, as well as to be the freedom to be all that God has created us and wants us to be. Only faith in Christ can save us and free us for God. Lauren Isley, in his book, The Immense Journey, tells of a time when he captured a sparrow hawk. He was on an expedition to secure wildlife for a zoo. And as he prepared to build a cage for his captive, Isley scanned the sky in vain for the mate who had escaped when the nest was raining. The author then described what happened as he took the young male out of the box in which he had been confined overnight. He lay limp in my grasp. I could feel his heart pound under the feathers, but it only looked up beyond me. I saw him look that last look away beyond me into a sky so full of light I could not follow his gaze. I suppose I must have had an idea of what I was going to do, but I never let it come into consciousness. I just reached over and I put the little sparrowhawk on 
of the crash. And they went there, not moving. A long minute without hope, his eyes still fixed on the blue vault above him. It must have been that he was already so far away in heart, he never even really felt the release from my hand. He never stood. He just lay with his breast against the breast. And the next second after that long minute, he was gone. Like a flicker of light, he vanished with my eyes fully on him. He was gone straight up into that towering emptiness of light and crystal that my eyes could scarcely begin to penetrate. For another long moment, there was silence. I couldn't see him. The light was too intense. But then, from far off somewhere, a cry came ringing down. I was young then, and I'd seen little of the world. But when I heard that cry, my heart turned over. It wasn't the cry of a hawk I had captured. For by shifting my position against the sun, I could not see a little further up. And straight out, the sun's eyes there must have been soaring restlessly above us for unfold hours. Was his name? From far up, ringing from peak to peak at the summits over us a cry of such unutterable and ecstatic joy that it sounds down across the years and tingles among the cups of my quiet breakfast table even today. I saw them both now. He was rising fast to meet her. They met in a great scaring gyro that turned into a swirling circle and dance of wings and once more, just once, her two voices joined in a harsh, wild medley of question and response, struck and echoed against the pinnacles of the valley. And then they were gone further, somewhere into those upper regions, beyond the eyes of them. When we are in Christ, we can also move into the upper regions of spiritual life to be liberated from all that cages and shackles our human spirit. Christianity was never intended to be a cage in finding the human cry for freedom, but rather to provide an arena in which we are freed by God's grace so that we can work out our salvation. We are free to love everyone. We're free to laugh and cry. Free to live and die. Free to be God's light in a darkened world cry of freedom and for freedom is found in Jesus Christ. Because when we're free in Christ, we are then free to work in the human family, participate in the governmental arena, or empowered to serve in our own church family right here. And as we consider our human family, our national family, our church family, let us remember the inspiring words of Victorian Judson. The future is as bright as the promises of God. The future is as bright as the promises of God. Because of Christ, we are truly free. I was contacted last week by Bill Worley. If we're thinking he's a conference minister, okay. And he was wondering what was happening with St. Peter. He was concerned because he saw a for sale sign out in front of the building. He was driving past and wanted to know what was up. I asked him if he would like to make an offer. I said it comes with its own cemetery. 
He wasn't interested in, you know, I'm not a real right. I should have thought I should have mentioned the ample parking, and I, I failed to do that. But I did explain the situation to them. And the sign is no longer there today. The house, of course, now has been sold down at the end. I think Judy has gotten more calls about that house than the real owner has. Okay? I mean, constantly she's been dealing with that. And has tried calling the real and finally had the sign taken down. But it is sold, so we're in good shape. But it has been a wonderful conversation piece for people. Maybe we should get to church one more time before it's sold, I guess. You know, I don't know. But we're in pretty good shape. And Thank you for all the extra time and effort you have put into that. I know it's been uh, something. So it's our joy that the sign is now at least today. Other joys and concerns? Marcia. I had a joy. Uh, it was a little over two years ago that Peter decided to pursue becoming a lay minister. And this week, uh, we celebrated two years since we were officially attain your ministry no, 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 no. status. It was a firm. A firm. It was a firm. Yeah. I remember our celebration was in September, but officially on the records with the UCC, it's this week, will be your two year anniversary. So we're so lucky you chose us. So thank you for everything you do. Well, thank you. Church. It's been such an honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Yesterday, I had the honor and the privilege to help lay to rest the fire chief of Elder Central Valley. So I asked that everybody just say a couple prayers that might be inserting the man right now. Um, he was the past chief, he hasn't been chief for a while, but he was such a great, great leader for Elder Senate in this community. Anything else? I would ask you to keep everyone on our prayer list, certainly in your daily prayers. And uh, if you could throw out a special one out for Ant right now. Okay. I had a chance to see him uh, Friday. To see him Friday. He's in the Reading Hospital right now. But he should be coming home, I think, today, as far as things are going. But Things are still kind of up in the air with that, so please, please keep him in your prayers, and Susan as well. Joyce? My husband is on the prayer list. He has an appointment tomorrow with a vascular surgeon, and he will have an ultrasound and some extra prayers that there's no further debilitation to be appreciated. Okay, some extra prayers for her. Yeah, okay. Yep, absolutely. Anything else? Pray. Heavenly Father, we lift up our hearts to you with gratitude, with the expression of love, the gift of this day, this soon, with so many possibilities. We thank you for the freedom that we enjoy in our lives. We thank you for the patience and the understanding as we strive to relieve ourselves of our destructive baggage. We humbly ask to help ease our pains and our sorrows so that we may become more in tune with your vast creation and to embrace our loved ones who are sick. We pray for their renewal of mind, body, and spirit. We pray for the sick, the aging, the young, asking that you, knowing their every need, will comfort and study those who cry out to you. Teach us to regard each dawn as the beginning of a holy day and to identify every deed as an opportunity for serving you. Inspire us to rejoice in the expanse of time as we live within, and to look ahead to its promise never ending. Giver of our daily bread, we lift up our hearts to you, O Lord, quiet and open, with reverence and with awe, as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as this is heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but to the rest of evil. And that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
Please join me in our service of communion. We are using the white line in the name of the part from the Lord. Let us begin with a personal affirmation of faith. I believe in God, who is for me spirit, love, the principle of all things. I believe that God is in me, as I am in God. I believe that the will of God is that every person should love one another and act toward others as they desire that they should act toward them. I believe that the reason for life is for each of us simply to grow in love with God and with each other. I believe, as Jesus taught, that life is good, not evil. I believe that even as Jesus shared bread and wine with his disciples, he considers us also as those who should follow him, not because we are strong in our faith, but because we know we are weak, not in seeking rewards, but because we seek Christ's teachings and God's presence in our communion with God. We are now about to observe the sacred ordinance of the Lord's Supper. The altar with its gifts of bread and wine is open to all fellow Christians. We cordially invite all who sincerely seek to share this gift to join us, not because we must, because we may. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall never hunger. Those who believe in me shall never thirst. Those who come to me I will in no wise cast out. <clears throat>
the body of Christ which is broken for you. Take and eat. which is shed for you. Take and drink. Amen. Please rise and let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have made us one in the body of Christ and nourished us at your table with holy food and drink. Now send us forth to be your people in the world. Grant us strength to persevere in resisting evil and to follow Christ's example in our service to others. Let us join our recessional hymn, How Beautiful Are Spacious Skies, number 594. <clears throat>
Thank you. 